Diary, a big hello. It is the beginning of August 2023 and today we are going to do a tour of my 20 plus year old uh, PC which has just come back into my possession uh, and the backstory is that I'm currently looking at, at uh, reading some old hard drives and I wanted an old PC to perform that task. Uh, it turns out this PC isn't quite up to scratch but it is back, back in the fold. Now it's been stored uh, for 20 plus years, maybe something like 23 years, um, up north, uh, not hermetically sealed. So I was very apprehensive as to whether it's still going to start. What we're going to do is going to look inside the PC, show you all the bits, show you how, about the fact that PC design is still sort of rooted in its past. Uh, and then we're going to start the PC up and, and see if it's usable. Okay. So this is a Cooler Master case, which is a kind of a posh brand for the time. Zoom in on that. Uh, so this dates back to about the year 2000, and as opposed to the machines on the left, which are dated about 1980, so they're 20 years further old. So this is a, about a 20 year old PC. So you'll see at the front, we've got uh, a floppy drive, 1.48 floppy drive, for some reason, I've got two DVD drives there. Uh, they're writers, and we've got space for two more media bays. At the front, we've got this little hatch, which doesn't actually work. I tried to get it working, it doesn't work. It's got two USB slots, which will plug into the motherboard. We're gonna see that. We've got a power switch and a reset switch. Now, let's shuffle around to the back, shall we? You can see this. So, on the back, we've got uh, copious fans. We'll see when we open the machine that there's absolutely loads of fans and they're not all even connected to it at the moment because I don't think it warrants it. So we've got a power supply, standard um, UK, sorry, not UK, international power supply. We've got a, a power switch, the NMX power supply, which um, is a posh power supply for the time. Again, we'll see inside in a second. We've got um, these two connectors for the keyboard and mouse. Um, if you look at these connectors. Now these connectors, of course, were the ones that the IBM PS2 went with. So PC Design previously had a larger, rounder mini DIN connector. But when the PS2 came out in 1987, uh, the industry quickly moved to this standard. Um, we've got the motherboard, which is on this side here and we've got the ports sticking out through there. And again, this, this design is still true to today. In other words, this case, even though it's from the year 2000, is housing what's called an ATX motherboard. And whilst there are many other form factors of motherboard these days, the ATX standard is still, still there. So I could take this motherboard out and with this bit of metal that comes with the motherboard, uh, this flimsy bit of metal here, I could place a new motherboard in and it would still work exactly the same. And this is a PCI system. We'll see in a second, it's the PCI bus. So these, these, are, these are card slots. I've upgraded this machine just as a test and I've put a modern ethernet card in uh, and I put a modern USB card in. Um, okay, the next step is to open the machine. How are we gonna do that? Well, we are gonna put the machine down and we're going to open these screws. So the, I've, I've put these nice, uh, quick to open screws on, the, on, on this edge here. Let me see that, zoom out a bit. Um, so this just pulls off. So if you see how motherboard's cases work, this edge is going to interlock with this aluminium. And by the way, this is an expensive case for the time. It's made out of solid aluminium. It's not to thin, cheap steel. Uh, and again, all these components are quality components. Okay, so now let's look into Mr. Machine and see what we got for our money in, in about the year 2000. Uh, so, the first thing that's a bit unusual about this PC is that it's got two processors, which even in today's uh, world of PCs is pretty unusual, unusual. So can you see these two fans here? 
So this is a, a motherboard from a company called Abit, A-B-I-T, and this is the VP6 motherboard. And in the year 2000, this was a, a damn fine state-of-the-art motherboard. Uh, okay. Um, it turns out that even 20 years later, these capacitors, so on, on an electronics card, what can tend to go are the capacitors, but these capacitors are all fine. So nothing, nothing has been needed to be replaced. This is the original graphics card. So if we look at the bus slots, over time, things have changed. So there are many different um, buses that PCs have and have had. And, and in this genre, which is the genre of the year about 2000, we were using the PCI bus. So there was the original ISA bus from the IBM PC. Well, to start from the beginning, this is a computer here, a Kremenko computer, and it uses an S100 bus. When the I IBM came along they, in about 1981, they completely blew the industry away and chose a different motherboard uh, bus, which was the ISA bus. And then they made that an ISA 16 bus, and then th that was changed later on to something called the PCI bus. And now we have PCI Express, which is something different again. So this is a PCI bus. There are no ISA slots in this machine, but there is a special AGP uh, adapter for a graphics card. So in this machine, we've got three cards. We've got the original AGP graphics card. We've got these PCI slots, one, two, three, four, five. I've put a gigabit ethernet card in here, and I've also put a USB card in there. And you can see there's a lot of space for expansion. So by the way, this is an Enamax power supply, and back in the day, in the year 2000, I think this is like a 600 watt power supply. It's a beefy old power supply. Uh, and back in the day, uh, that was a huge power supply. And the reason you'd need a huge power supply like that would not just be for the motherboard, but for the fact this has got four, uh, five, six, seven, eight media bays. So you could fit sort of eight, you could fit four, four, four hard drives in here, and you could fit another four media devices there. So you could fit, say, eight media devices. Now on the motherboard, it's a bit of a tangly mess. Let's have a little, can we zoom in on that? Um, so motherboards typically do contain lots of, so in, in terms of PCs, still contain lots of wires, and that was one of the design goals that the IBM PS2 was trying to remove, but the, the PS2 never took, up, took off really because of licensing uh, royalties that IBM wanted everyone to pay. Uh, so we're still back with the design, which is fundamentally rooted in the, uh, I would say, 80s, 90s. This is still this ATX motherboard plugged into a, a chassis with cards that fit this way. And on the motherboard here, if you can see it, we've got two disk interfaces. We've got a disk interface there with two ports, which is an IDE disk interface. And each interface can take two devices. So one cable is going to these two drives. And the other cable is going, but the only modification I've made so far really in, in, in substance, which is a SATA drive with an IDE to SATA, SATA converter. So the idea is that this PC can use a modern SATA drive. We're using the IDE interface with a six pound from Amazon IDE converter to convert it to SATA. And a lot of trial and error later, I found out that so with the IDE standard, there's a master and a slave, and you've got a single cable that can connect two, up to two devices on each, on each port. So there's, a, there's four IDE connectors here, and each port can connect two devices. But, try as I might, if this, is, if this device with its converter is sharing with this uh, existing 160 gigabyte hard drive, it just doesn't work. The number of times I dismantled this PC, reassembled it, recabled it. It literally took me hours to, to find out that no combination under the sun works when this modern IDE to SATA drive, uh, IDE converter is, is connected to this disk. So if anyone's watching and they're doing the same thing, use a separate bus, use a separate IDE bus because this converter just does not want to share with anything. So I think that's the tour really. Um, I think it's quite beautiful inside and don't forget this is a 20 year old PC and it's 
still about to, to work as, you, as you're going to see. So we're going to start it up, we're going to have a look at a few things in the BIOS and then we're going to look at Windows XP which is what's currently installed. <laughs> 